Uh, my name is Jack Diederich. Uh, Jack died everywhere on the web except for MySpace. There's a Turkish techno DJ, took the name. Uh, <laughs> if anyone's submitting a PyCon talk, uh, I've done a bunch of them. If you want to grab me afterwards for a quick review, I'd be happy to do that. This is the lightning talk version of a longer talk I gave at Pi Ohio. Uh, the video is on YouTube, and it's called Deleting Heart. The leading code is hard and you should do it. Um, this talk will cover why deleting code is hard and why you should do it. This is from my PyCon talk, uh, Stop Writing Classes. I hate code and I want as little, it, as little of it as possible in our product. Our customers don't care how much code we have. They care if our product does whatever they need it to do. So if we can do that same thing with less code, that means we need fewer engineers to do the same thing. That means maintenance is easier. It means everything's easier. Uh, they're willing to give us money for a solution. They don't care what it looks like in the back. We care what it looks like on the back end. Because the in internal and invisible at the end engineering, that's us. All the code we have to maintain, we're the only ones that can see it. Other people, the external and invisible, those are people in the company. They can see what the web product looks like. They don't know what we're running on the back end. They don't care if we're using Django or anything else. Uh, and then external and invisible is our customers. Those are the people who actually have to use the website. They just want it to be fast. They just want it to do whatever it does. They don't, they don't care about how burdened engineering is or how whiz bang the technology is. Either it does what they want it to do and they give us money, or it doesn't and they don't. There are lots of bad reasons not to delete code. Uh, not embedded here. Some people feel kind of a tight ownership about, about their code. Uh, don't do that. You know, if someone else has done the same thing already, uh, hell, if it's an open source project, that means not as only has someone else done it already for you, they're maintaining. So even if you have to do a little work to customize it, you hand that piece back to them, and then you both get to enjoy it. So not invented here is a terrible reason uh, not to delete your code. Uh, it might be used somewhere. This is, especially in Python, one of the biggest things. You're not sure if it's actually being used. Uh, this is kind of problematic, but it's not a great reason. Uh, Deleting the code will, will be much better off in the, in the long run. I might, I might need it later. This, this is a terrible reason. If you've ever seen code that's commented out, you can delete that. It's not being used. It doesn't matter if you need it later. Uh, it might be used somewhere. Here's some tools that will help you find out if it actually is used. Uh, these are all imperfect, uh, even the redneck up. Coverage. Uh, coverage is great. Uh, coverage is in Ned's project, plug in the nose, and it tells you what lines of code were run. Uh, it's most often used with unit tests uh, to make sure you're, you're hitting all the, the big points. Uh, the problem with coverage is it only shows you what code is, was actually run. And uh, my company's service, we have some machines that run off and crawl the web. We have machines that run off and do categorization, natural language processing, machine learning. And then our actual end users are marketers. So they get this nice Django application. All those different things use different parts of our code base. Um, I went and, and did a, a quick count uh, today. Out of 800.py files on our three different kinds of machines, one had 261 PYCs on it, which means only 261 of those 800 had been imported. Uh, another one had 425, and another one had 426. The one with 425 and 426, you might think that those were the same. Uh, they were actually only about 60% the same PYC files. So in order to get good information about what code you actually use using coverage.py, you need to run all those different entry points. You need to run your cron tabs and record those. You need to run your web servers and record those. You need to run your crawling pipeline and record those. And then collate that information and try to figure out what's happening. So that, that's actually kind of hard. Uh, I'll give you some good hints. If you know something looks like it's used by the web server and it's not in the profile for the web server, then you're probably okay. So Python is great. I love Python. Uh, but dynamic languages 
in, if, in a static language, you can say whether something is used or not. The, the compiler can sort all that. Um, we don't have static analysis in Python. So there's a bunch of places, if you, if you have a function named hello, a method named hello on a class, and you're pretty sure it's not used, or you're not sure if it's not used, there's some easy ways to grip for it. And there are places where it's very easy to see that it's actually being called. Ob that hello, yeah. That looks like the method being called. Maybe there's more than one hello. You'll have to sort that out on your own. But ob dot hello definitely gets called somewhere. Uh, it gets a little bit more complicated. If you were looking for dot hello, because it could be doing a get adder hello on ob and then calling it with something. So depending on how loose your, your grabbing is, you might actually see that one. The last one, that, that could actually happen. Um, we had one guy who, uh, I did a one line change to a file. And I committed it with a two sentence commit message. He reverted it, and I said, why did you revert that? If I have a two line commit message, I probably meant it. He said, well, that's not used anymore. I said, okay, well, just delete the line. Then. And he said, okay. And I said, uh, and then deploy to production. <laughs> he said, that line's used, but isn't it? I said, yes. And it was, it was gotten that through an indirect method like this. So he was sure that it wasn't called. It was called. Um, a mitigation strategy to prevent that from happening is do all the dynamic lookups for stuff as close as possible to the place where it's actually defined. Um, so if, you, if it's in a class, try to do it in a class. Definitely keep it inside the module. If for some reason you can't do that, please keep it inside the package so that you can at least narrow down where you have to grep and where you have to search when you're going to delete stuff. Uh, another mitigation strategy is avoid being clever. Always. Uh, Meta class Tom Ford never did anyone any good. Uh, class decorators are slightly better. I'm a bit biased. Uh, uh, get, get adders can be useful, uh, but can also hide things. Uh, the best way to make your job of finding and deleting unused code simple is finding and deleting code. So the less you have to search through, the more sure you can be that something isn't actually used. Um, if you're staying on top of your deleting game, you, don't have, you have fewer cycles which means you have fewer functions that look like they're called. Op hello looks like it's called because op dot goodbye is calling op dot hello, which is calling op dot goodbye, or some other cycle of things. Um, entry points like scripts. So scripts, um, in most of your projects, you probably have some junk directory that are just entry points for command line scripts. Delete the ones you don't use anymore because those will be the entry point into all the cycles of code that's not actually used. So it looks like it's used because it's, there's an entry point from a script, and then you get hung up and say, hey, somebody's using that, I didn't write that script, I'm gonna leave it alone. So when you leave these things that you're not really using alone, you get all this cruft, and then it becomes hard to figure out what is actually deletable later. Uh, test your imports. So this is not a very friendly command line, but what this will actually do is find every py in a directory and its subdirectories, and just do an import dash c, or python dash c import that mod. So this avoids, well, it doesn't avoid, this will help you find import cycles very quickly. Or actually very slowly, because it's importing every single <laughs> Python module in your directory uh, one at a time. Um, this takes about a half an hour to run on our code base, so you can't just run it like you do your smoke tests. But at the, at the end of every day, I run this or something very close to this, and if any, any of these hit an import cycle and it fails, I can narrow it down to something happened today, which is at least helpful. Uh, I don't know if any of you have used git bisect or similar. It takes two different commit points. You say, okay, I know this used to work here, and I know it's broken here, and then git will split the difference, and say, okay, is that broken or fixed? And you say broken, and it goes to here. So is that broken or fixed? It goes here. So that's fine when your unit tests take 30 seconds. Uh, 
when this takes a half an hour, then doing a git bisect to, to find a, where a circular import was introduced is a pain in the ass. Uh, bad reasons not to delete code. I might need it later. You won't. If you're not using it, you're not using it for a reason. Just, just let it go. Because you have it under your provision control. And revision control does two things. It archives content, the things you won't need later, just in case you really want to have them. And it archives purpose. One of the reasons deleting code is hard is because you're not sure if something was there because someone was having a bad day, or because it solved some edge condition that you just never thought of. Um, if anyone's ever heard of uh, G.K. Chesterton's fence, he said if you ever come upon a fence and you don't know why it's there, don't tear it down. Someone spent time and effort putting that fence there. It might have been a really crappy reason why they put it there. But until you know that it was a crappy reason, you're a fool to tear it down. So archival of purpose and revision control, you go back and you can see git blame, and you see who wrote the line when. Uh, you might have to go back a few commits till when it was originally added. And eventually you'll, you'll find a commit where someone stated the purpose for that line being there. And if it's crappy purpose, yank it out. If it's a very important purpose that is buried way, way back, add a code come. Uh, if you're really worried about searching and archiving stuff, disk is cheap. Copy A. Uh, I have a subdirectories in my source folder, and I make a copy of the repo as is once a quarter. And if I really need to do a deep search for something that used to be there or whose name I can't quite remember, then I just do a recursive repo on that. Um, build a culture that deletes. So at work, at engineering, every Friday is trash day. If you're not doing something else important, delete something. And we don't keep individual metrics for who deletes stuff. Because even when people don't mean to, they start gaming metrics. And even when people mean to be kind, if I know that you know, deleting code gets you points, I'm not going to delete Chris's code because you know, I think Chris should get the points. So we just have, we keep group stats at the end of every quarter, but everyone is encouraged just to go in and if something isn't needed, just tear it out. Uh, ask the guy who put it there uh, if you can't figure it out. And if he doesn't have a good reason, say, all right, I'm going to tear this out unless you tap me on the shoulder in the next half hour. And stuff gets deleted. A lot of stuff gets deleted. So this, this isn't our exact line count numbers. Uh, we have more than 100,000 lines of Python, but less than a million. Uh, these actually represent the same total line counts between the two quarters. Uh, we just shifted where it is. So, you know, you can substitute quite a bit of quite a large number of features of, in Python when you're deleting Java and XML, of course. Uh, so we actually managed to introduce more features while keeping our total line count the same. And I didn't have time to update the slide. But in Q3, we actually dropped our Python line count by another 10% while adding new features. And that's just because we got really good at taking out the trash. So that's the whole thing. Great. Right. I don't know how to try to but you deleted them. Yeah. <laughs> Any so, questions? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to see the longer version, it's on YouTube. Uh, I did not know there was such a thing. Uh, we, we use uh, PyFlakes, but I'll, I'll take a look at that. Have you tried any of the analysis features that are in IDEs on PyCharm? Uh, no. So, uh, one, I don't really believe in IDEs. Um, Kind of long beard thing to say. Uh, and uh, everyone at the office has their own favorite editor. Um, I've just never tried. Anyone else? Um, it, it seems like like this is a good thing to put emphasis on, but it's sort of like telling people not to smoke pot, but not telling them why. Like, also encourage people to comment their code better so you know why the stuff that's sitting there that you're 
Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, in, the analogy, so I yeah, that's right. I, I'm, I'm mostly in the comments or lies camp, yeah. uh, but on the, on the very rare occasion where something is very non-obvious, then yeah, comment it. Anyone else? All right, thanks.